welcome back. Now I'm going to do a problem I'm calling oscillations of a block in water. So this is actual problem that you can do also in physics and you can simulate it and you can actually run the experiment and then compare the two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a block. I'm going to put it in water. So a certain block of wood, right? And I'm also going to maybe put some extra weight on that block. So the block already has a certain mass and then I'm going to add a certain weight to that uh, block. Then I'm going to push the block a little bit in water. I'm going to push it down and the buoyant force of the water is going to exert an upward force on the block and the weight. And then so the buoyant force is going to exert a force on it upward greater than the weight of the block and the extra weight. And then the buoyant force is going to cause it to go up and down. Right? As it goes up, the buoyant force is reduced. So it starts dropping back down again. And then it's going to go back up, it's going to go back down. So it's going to bob up and down with a certain frequency. And we're going to calculate the frequency of oscillations of that system, right? So let's see what the setup of this is. You have the, uh, the buoyant force on the uh, block minus the weight of the block is equal to the mass of the block times the acceleration, right? So what is the buoyant force of the block? Well, uh, the buoyant force on the block is the density of the water plus the volume of the portion of the block that is submerged inside of the liquid, right? So this is, uh, this is we can call V prime times gravity. And then this is the mass of the block plus whatever extra mass that you've added on top of it times gravity. That's equal to the mass of the block plus the whatever mass you've added to it is equal to the acceleration, okay? Now naturally what's going to happen when you put the block and the weight together, right? So naturally, the block and the weight, they're going to go, they're going to submerge down to a certain uh, height, right, H prime, down to a certain height, and then it, it will be at equilibrium. Now, if I push an extra amount, what's causing the bobbing up and down is that I'm going to push this down an extra amount. So I'm going to call that extra amount X, right? So I'm going to push it down an extra amount x. That's going to increase the buoyant force, right? So the V prime is going to be the sum of the natural uh, height that it's submerged under the water. It's natural equilibrium height, h, right? Um, we can call this one either h prime or h. So the density water, V prime, is going to be what? h plus x, the extra amount that I push down, right? times the cross-sectional surface area of the, uh, the cube, of well, the, the, the piece of wood, right? The cross-sectional surface area, A, times gravity minus mass of block plus mg is equal to mass of block plus ma. Now notice what happens. I can divide this up into two parts, the density of the water times h times a times g minus density of water xag minus mass of block plus mass times gravity, mass of block plus m a, right? So I'm going to argue that the density of the water times the natural height that it would have sunk, right, without me giving the extra push, this h times a times g, this is actually equal to the mass of the block plus whatever mass I put on it times gravity. This and this are equal because that's the whole definition of the h. The h is the natural height that the block and the extra weight would have sunk under the bottom, right? And then it would have been at equilibrium at that point. So this cancels this. So you just have this expression is equal to mb plus ma. Okay, so then I can take this to the other side. Zero is equal to mb plus ma plus density of water ag times x. Then I'm going to say A is the second derivative of X, right? Because the X is going to be changing over time as this goes up and down, right? So then I'm going to say we have here 0 is equal to MB plus M, the second derivative of X with respect to T, plus density of water AGX, right? So what is basically happening as the buoyant force exerts a force up, it's starting to go up, but as it's starting to go up, the buoyant force on it is decreasing, right? So then after it reaches, after it passes the equilibrium point, this is the equilibrium point, right? 
After it passes that, the block goes up here. What happens? The buoyant force on it is less than the weight of the object, right? Because at the equilibrium point, the buoyant force and the weight are equal. That's why we were able to cancel these two, right? When at its natural height. Once we pass that point, the buoyant force is less than the weight, and then it starts to decelerate and then come back down, right? Then once it comes back down, the same kind of process has happened. It comes back down, then it passes the buoyant, uh, it passes the natural uh, height, it goes down, and then the buoyant force is now larger than its weight, right? Past that point, the buoyant force is smaller. It's smaller than its weight, so the weight wins. So it accelerates, decelerates, and then, and then the opposite happens on its way down. Accelerates, decelerates, and then accelerates, decelerates. So basically it goes up and down with a certain period of motion, right? So then we can now use the block uh, frequency example. We have zero is equal to m d squared x dt squared plus kx. This is the equation for a block making simple harmonic motion with a spring. And we can say omega is equal to square root of k over m, and the period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. All right? Well, in our case, uh, the period is going to be what? 2 pi. The m is replaced by whatever is in front of this, so the mass of the block plus the whatever extra mass I put on it. So mass of block plus whatever extra mass I put on it, divided by the k. In our k, the k is not the spring constant of the spring, but it's the density of water times the surface area of the block times gravity. So that's exactly what changes. Instead of spring constant, I need the density of water, the surface area, and gravity. So the bigger the density of the water, the bigger the surface area, cross-sectional surface area of the, uh, the uh, piece of wood, the bigger the force of gravity, right, the less the period is going to be. That means it's going to go up and down. Uh, shorter, in a shorter amount of time. If the block of wood is um, smaller in surface area, then it's uh, going to have a longer period. Then the more weight you add on top, that's going to add to the period, right? So it has the opposite effect. Okay? So let's uh, see the experiment here. It shows 175 grams. 175 grams. So we'll record that. Then I'm going to put this extra weight on it, and this weight is uh, 20 grams. So then uh, the extra weight is 20 grams. Okay? Then I can put it in this water. Now notice after I put it in, it naturally sinks to a certain height, to a certain depth. Push it down. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So the oscillations are not with a very large amplitude. So I got 4.14 seconds. 4.14 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 4.15 seconds. So let's say the time was 4.15 seconds. The period is going to be 4.15 divided by 10, because that was the time for 10 oscillations. So 0.415 seconds. This is the experimental, okay? So then what would the theoretical period be? So the, we, put, we would put the theoretical period 2 pi. The mass of the block would be 175 grams changed to kilogram, 0.175. The mass of, the extra mass I added, 0.020 divided by density of water, which is a thousand kilogram per cubic meter. So I'm staying in units of metric units, so everything has to be kilogram. I'm not using the one gram per cubic centimeter density of water. I'm using thousand kilogram per cubic meter. Now I need to measure the surface area of the block. So measure the length. That's going to give me, length is 9.6 centimeter, right? 9.6 centimeter. So convert that to meter, 0 0.096 meter, right? Then I'm going to measure the width, which is going to be 7 centimeters, pretty much 7 centimeters. So 0 0.07 meter. Notice how the units of this works. This is meter and meter, so it's meter squared. This is kilogram. This is kilogram per cubic meter. 
And then the units of gravity are 9.8 meter per second squared. Let's do a unit analysis. What happens to the units? The kilogram cancels the kilogram. Meter squared times meter becomes what? Meter cubed, which cancels the meter cubed. And you're left with what? Everything canceled except 1 over second squared. The 1 over second squared goes to the numerator as a second squared. And then when you take the square root of second squared, you get seconds, and then that's the period in units of seconds. So the unit analysis itself shows that the equation we derived is the correct equation, right? So now let's put all this in seconds, okay? So the answer I got is a little bit more than that. I probably had a reaction error, uh, error reaction time, because it's, since it's going fast, it's taking me time to react to the, the motion of the block, and then I'm, I have to look at that, and I have to press uh, stop, but since it's so uh, fast, by the time I'm pressing stop, some more time has elapsed. So I'm a little bit over the theoretical, but very, very close. So you can see that it did come out pretty good, um, that the period did come out to be about the same as the experimental. So then my percent error will be, okay, so not bad. Now what if I didn't have the extra mass on there? Would that change things a lot? Well, you would kind of get rid of this thing. The bottom would stay the same. So then the theoretical period should be quicker, right? So it's gonna be, so the extra weight did add about um, 0.02 seconds to the period, right? So what if I did the experiment again with just the block? Let's see if I would get a better result. Block, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm getting 3.89 seconds. So 3.89 divided by 10, I'm getting point, uh, 0.39, okay? So I'm getting, for this one, I'm getting T experimental about 0.39 seconds. So I'm getting shorter period than this by about 0.02, but it's still uh, larger than the T theoretical, perhaps for, uh, due to my reaction time. So you see that the idea is working, and uh, that you, this shows you how to calculate the period of oscillation in something in, in a liquid, right? So instead of water, if we had mercury, what would happen? The density of mercury is a lot bigger, 13,600, right? So then the period is going to be a lot faster if you put it in a thick fluid, okay? So you can see how to do problems like this. Thank you very much.